If your resolution for 2017 is to spend less time working when your workday is done, maybe you should consider moving to France. A new law there has gone into effect, giving workers the right to disconnect from work email after hours. But there is a catch. Joining us to discuss is WSJ reporter Sam Schechner from Paris. Hi, Sam. Thanks for being with us. So does this law affect your work life in any way? Well, I was about to say, it's uh, getting close to the end of the day, so I'm about to disconnect. I don't know if uh, this, this segment will be over in time. Um, no, I, you know, it's uh, it's great on paper. It's actually an issue that is not, um, well, great, I guess, for employees on paper. Uh, it's an issue that's not restricted to France. Um, but the law, which is part of this big omnibus labor law aimed at actually loosening restrictions for hiring and firing to sort of juice uh, hiring in France, uh, where the you know unemployment has stayed rather stubbornly high, uh, like in other parts of Europe. This law introduces this new right to disconnect, but the right really boils down to a right for employees to negotiate or unions to negotiate with uh, employers on ways to make sure that their off time is better respected and that they're not you know, forced to be constantly on their phones. Uh, and if they don't come to an agreement, then the office has to put out a kind of charter, a sensitivity charter for how people should respect, uh, you know, family life and the division between work and private time. I see. So everyone has to agree. And Sam, does this law only apply to companies with more than 50 employees? Yes, it, it only applies to uh, large companies. Okay. Um, but again, it, it's not um, it's not like as of today, I can just turn off my phone and, uh, you know, no, no worries. Uh, you know, there, we'd have to have a negotiation about how to how to handle it uh, workplace by workplace. So everywhere does this France. negotiation then have to happen at all companies in France, including multinational companies like The Wall Street Journal? Well, uh, it does. Anybody who's employed in France probably works for actually a French company that's owned by that aforementioned multinational. So it does have to happen. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see uh, particularly large changes in the way uh, waste companies behave. That being said, it could lead to a, the effort, the idea at least from the defenders' laws, to change a little bit of the workplace culture sure. uh, where people are supposed to be always on. And, and in fact, some of where you've seen this pushed most extremely is in Germany, uh, where a number of large employers have actually instituted programs where, you know, employees can opt out of getting any emails after nine o'clock or, uh, you know, so both Volkswagen and Daimler have, uh, have um, you know, instituted rules like this for their, uh, their employees and, and Daimler, um, you know, actually between 6.15 and 7 a.m., uh, their servers don't send corporate emails to Germany-based non-manager employees. And Daimler employees can actually ask as well during their vacation time when they have their out-of-office on to just have the emails deleted so when they come back, they don't have the full inbox. Right, they don't have to deal with it. Now, let's say a company and its employees negotiates an email schedule that everybody agrees on. What happens if it's violated? Does the company get fined? Uh, there's actually no penalty in the law, so no. Um, but uh, that would kind of fall to whatever the agreement stipulated. You might, if it gets violated, get extra time off or things like that. Uh, again, it would come down to uh, a workplace agreement. I think in most cases, though, this is more of a symbolic gesture to sort of say, hey, listen, let's say stop to this world where we're all on Twitter and Facebook and our company email all the time and try to create more of a work-life balance, which frankly is something that does uh, come up in conversations in the United States as well. Uh, well, absolutely. I was going to say nobody argues with that. So do you think that we could see similar legislation in the U.S. anytime soon? It seems like the U.S. has a slightly different approach to handling these kinds of cultural shifts than, than uh, France does. Uh, France, they, they joke about how there's a new law for every problem. Um, you know, that's a French joke. Right. Uh, it's not It's not entirely true, but there's certainly some truth to it. So I, I would be surprised. I'm not a legal prognosticator. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure somebody will propose it along the way. We'll see how far it gets in Congress. Well, Sam, we're going to let you go because we know you got to turn off that email. But thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'm about to disconnect. <laughs>